Detective Recap here. Today, I'm going to explain a sci-fi thriller film called Archive. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In 2038, a scientist named George Almore is designated in Japan, working and living alone in the middle of a forest at a massive artisan robotics compound. His only companions are his two robotic creations, J1 and J2, who also serve as his helpers. The second prototype, J2, watches her favorite cartoon and tells George about a dream she had of them driving a car. She doesn't remember much of the dream, but she tells him that she felt sad when she woke up. J2 also informs him that someone wants to talk to him. George seems to know who she's talking about. Later that day, George talks to a woman named Jules Almore, who happens to be his wife. While they are having the conversation, Jules has a hard expression on her face. She tells him that she can't talk to him anymore, and she hopes that he's happy there. The signal weakens, and Jules bids him goodbye. George remains baffled for a couple of minutes, and then he suddenly finds himself in an autonomous car with Jules. They get into a playful mood, and Jules asks him to set the car in self-driving mode. George disapproves, saying that he doesn't trust the car's automatic driving feature since he didn't design it. Meanwhile, at present, George is on a call with his boss, Simone. She notices that it has been two years, and he still hasn't shown them anything except for two unsuccessful robots, referring to J1 and J2 as two horrible things. She reminds him that he only has three years to develop and finish his research. Simone ends the call by ordering George to back up the system and secure the place. After the call, George and J2 share their sentiments towards his boss. He tells J2 that it's better if they limit Simone's knowledge about the two prototypes, or else she'll have them shut down. J2 agrees and reassures J1 that she isn't horrible, contrary to what the boss said. A little while later, George continues work while a video memory of his wife plays in the background. He is working on another prototype, which he names J3. J3 looks vastly different from J1 and J2 and she is the only one to have an actual human form. Unbeknownst to George, J2 peeks through his laboratory to see what he is up to. When George and J2 go out to fix their reception system, he notices that J2 is unusually quiet. She then asks him why he won't let her help him with his work, reminding him that they used to be a team. George reassures her that he's not replacing her with the new prototype. J2 still feels unsure, seeing that the new robot is similar to her but only better. However, she notices a pattern and realizes that she's better when compared to her sister, J1. George tries to escape the conversation and orders J2 to get back to the house since it's cold outside and the prototype might get wet. George returns to his station to continue assembling his third prototype. He successfully installs the artificial intelligence into her brain, but her system cannot fully process it yet as she is suddenly able to recollect Jules's memories as well. George comforts her and puts her into hibernation to adjust and help her feel better once she wakes up. When George heads out the next morning, he's surprised to see a dog at their entrance. He sends the dog away and voice commands their system to shut the entrance. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. J2 pretends that she knows nothing about it, but she seems delighted when George asks for her help. George and J2 are fixing the system outside when a vehicle stops. Mr. Sinclair and Mr. Melvin, who are representatives of the archive company, approach them. George immediately commands J1 and J2 to stay in their station until the visitors are gone. The two have come to inform George that they received the notifications of his wife's transition to somnolence. They also want to check the condition of the archive machine for their client. Mr. Sinclair casually talks to him, but George seems distracted by Mr. Melvin's operation on the machine. Mr. Melvin finds out that someone patched the security seals and the environmental systems of the unit, but George reluctantly denies it and asks him to recheck the system for errors. Mr. Melvin grows suspicious and reminds George that the home use of the archive legally constitutes storage of the deceased user's remains. Once it is used for personal reasons, they have a legal obligation to remove the unit and prepare it for burial. George causes an outburst as he doesn't want his wife to leave yet. However, Mr. Melvin warns him that they are obliged to act under the post-death internment act with force if they find out that he acting against the rules. George claims that he has never done anything wrong and that the archive company can't do anything because they don't have proof. When they leave, George knows they'll quickly find evidence, so he works around the clock to finish J3. George returns to his station to examine J3's condition. He puts off a hibernation mode and brings J3 back to her senses. However, she seems upset and tired. George comforts her and clarifies that he did that to minimize her trauma before bringing her back online. She is confused as she cannot remember anything, but George explains that her software is finding patterns, and trying to piece things together. He assures her that the process might not be tidy, but it is working. The following day, once J3 calms down, George starts examining her taste buds by introducing her to different flavors such as vanilla and lime. He also examines her memory by letting her read different words. He also takes her under the empathy test. When J3 asks the point of the tests, George simply responds that those tests will give him a lot of information about her personality. Suddenly, J3 notices the scar on George's face, and he then reveals that he got it from an accident. After several more tests, George asks her to keep talking so her throat won't feel numb and tight. J3 then tells him that she has been dreaming a lot lately, but she is not sure if it is dreaming or remembering. 
Eventually, J1 walks in and introduces herself to J3. George informs her that J1 has problems with her mobility and that he didn't have enough time back then to fabricate her any arms, which makes J3 ask if he is going to finish her. He replies that he is working on it, and hopefully, she will be fully independent. He also shows J3 their cognitive ability and reveals that J1 stopped developing at age 5 to 6. He then used it as a template for version 2, which is J2, and her brain stopped developing around 15 to 16 years old. Then, he shows her a fully functional brain figure which is hers, unaware that J2 is watching them in the CCTV, witnessing everything, including the revelation she never knew. A feeling of envy takes over her, encouraging her to potentially sabotage J3. One night, while George is sleeping, J2 destroys the devices in the basement. At the same time, George seems to be remembering his wife in his dreams. George shares a piece of good news with Jules, telling her that his company is offering him a three-year contract job, where he would do three years of solid research with a deliverable prototype at its end. Jules seems very happy, congratulating him, and keeps on telling him that she is so proud of him. However, George also tells him that he would be in Japan if he accepts the offer, and Jules seems surprised about it, then suddenly there is an awkward silence between them. George assures Jules that he will not take it if she doesn't want him to, but there's still tension in the air. All of a sudden, a car appears and crashes straight into them, leading to a vehicular accident. George wakes up from the nightmare by the loud alarm in his station. He finds their window shattered, and J3 is missing. His first thought is that someone might have stolen her, so he sneaks into the basement and looks for her. The next day, George still can't find J3, but he doesn't give up. He scours the entire forest with two aerial searching devices but finds nothing. Then suddenly Jules appears, they have an essential conversation about the new technology, called Archive. George explains to her that archived clients can expect up to 200 hours of face-to-face -face interaction with the deceased loved one. As she asks why he wants to talk to a dead person, and he replies so that he can say goodbye properly. He then adds that he misses her. However, Jules seems to disagree, stating that she doesn't want to be trapped dead in a machine. Jules disappears, and George still can't find J3. George returns to the base in the late afternoon. As he opens a drawer to look for another searching device, J3 falls onto him, appearing weak and frail, and calls him a monster. It takes him a while to calm her down but he does his best to explain to J3 what is going on to gain her trust again. He tells her that he has data that the computer managed to pull out of the archives. However, it never managed to connect to a computer before. He explains that J3's brain is not a computer, but there is a biochemical element in it which he could extract an analog signal from and put it into a piece of pattern recognition software. After one year of trials, he finally saw Jules' signals. He then created a personality template and then started creating a physical version, which resulted in J1, then J2, now J3. He assures her that he won't make a fourth prototype. After talking for a while, he discovers that J2 secretly brought J3 into the document's room the night before. J2 even told her that she will be George's wife's replacement in the future and that George will manufacture more advanced robots to replace her, just as J3 has now replaced J2. In the end, J2 locks her in the drawer. After knowing J3's side, George now confronts J2, who is feeling guilty and sorry. J2 explains that she only wants J3 to know the truth and not hurt his feelings, but George is so enraged that he turns off J2 and leaves. George receives a call from Simone, telling him that the archive company wants to talk to him about his wife. The company suspects that he based the two robots on their archive technology and that they want to take a good closer look at the two inventions. Simone assures him that their research is confidential. However, the company is still threatening legal actions against him. She also informs him that their lawyers are looking into the case against George since he breached his confidentiality agreement by letting outsiders into the house, which might be grounds for termination. A few days later, George visits J2 in her station. J2 notices something is not right with her legs and suspects that he gave it to J3. George denies it and tells J2 that there was technology in there that is essential for his work. On the days that J2 was shut down, George was actually working on completing the third prototype, where he dismantled J2's legs and modified them to be better. Once they were improved, he gave them to J3 and coated her body with a white skin-like medium. J3 now has a complete human form, on the other hand, J2 feels depressed, used, and worthless. She occasionally visits the waterfalls and takes long walks, causing it to lose its power and eventually shut down. Fortunately, J1 is there to inform George about what happened to J2. But when he examines J2, he sees no damage. J2 tells him that having no physical damage doesn't mean that she's okay. Feeling annoyed, George leaves and tells her that they should talk once J2 is less dramatic. George continues hanging out with J3, and they seem to have a good time as they are laughing and dancing together. On the other hand, J2 peeks through the wall and sees their love growing stronger, a sight which she could not bear anymore. Feeling hopeless and worthless, she goes to J1 and pats her as if she is saying goodbye for the last time. She even leaves a goodbye letter. She goes outside in the middle of terrible weather, then suddenly, she is in front of the lake. She heads down and slowly approaches the water, causing self-damage and losing its signals until she is completely soaked. George impatiently searches everywhere until the computer announces that it lost its connection with J2 as well. He almost collapses with the loss. Even though he cannot find her body, he buries J2's things and holds a funeral for her in the evening.
That night, J3 has a breakthrough because she is given a portion of Jules' memory data to feel the love between Jules and George. J3 lays on George's bed, and George mistakes her for Jules, so he kisses her, but when he opens his eyes, he sees the person in front of him as J3, so he kicks her out. The following day, George continues finishing his final touches with J3. While J3 is unconscious, flashes of Jules's memories keep appearing in her mind, such as memories from a car accident, where a police officer announces it needed one archive machine for a deceased person. J3 also recalls Jules being pregnant. Later that day, Simone angrily calls George. It turns out that the archive company discovered J2 at the bottom of the lake, which is proof that George stole the company's data. Simone decides to fire George right away while George turns off all of the basis systems. Because J3 believes Simone is the bad guy, she smashes the screen with the thought of helping George. While he is away, J3 takes the call from Jules in the archive machine and says he cannot come to the phone right now and that she will take care of him once Jules is completely gone. On the other line, Jules seems so confused as she doesn't understand what J3 is trying to say, but what J3 meant is when Jules' archive expires. George comes back, and he gets the phone from J3 and says he cannot explain everything right now, but he reassures her that he will see her very soon. Then, the call ends. J3 is astonished by what she has heard, and it makes sense to her now that George is going to put Jules' archive into her. Finally, George discloses J3 that he intends to erase her consciousness and replace it with Jules's. He tells her that it is the only way. J3, like any other living being, does not wish to die and out of frustration, she yells at him that Jules is already dead. Suddenly, she breaks down and gets the gun from a case. She points it at him to interrogate him more about what is really happening and what the archive company wants. He says they want to examine her and look further at what he has already done. She is perplexed as to how she suddenly has all of this knowledge. While feeling hopeless, J3 tells him that she never stood a chance. George apologizes, saying that he built J3 because it is his fault why Jules is dead and that he built her so they could have a life like they are supposed to have together. In this instance, J3 becomes aware that George is dead and is fading within the archive. It is that aspect of George's consciousness that refuses to vanish. J3 wishes for George's consciousness to depart in the belief that he ends up happily with Jules that is why J3 finally gives George the consent to put the archive into her, which he immediately does since there's no more time left. After a short coma, J3 regains consciousness and acts as if she is now Jules. George is delighted for a moment until the phone rings. The company's recovery team, which is on its way to retrieve George and his robots, after he chose to run his secret sub-project, mysteriously vanishes. Regardless of how hard his subconscious tries to keep him from confronting the truth about his death, George eventually walks toward the ringing phone which J3 warns him not to pick up because the truth is bitter. Still, he picks up the phone and hears Jules' voice. She bursts into tears and tells George that the archive company people told her that his consciousness is about to vanish completely, maybe this is the last time she could call him. George realizes he's been dead, and Jules is making his final call before he fades. She summons the courage to convince their daughter to speak with George and exchange their final farewells. George's eyes well up with tears as he confronts the truth and he eventually vanishes. Jules eventually hangs up the phone and walks away while carrying their young child. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.